If you're a mountain biker, you already know where we are. That's right. Ladies Out France in the shadows of the French Alps. To the signature event of Crankworks, we're talking about slope style. One of the biggest events in all of mountain biking about ready to take place. The best riders in the world and your first diamond stop of the young 2014 season. It's Ladies Out France, it's Crankworks, and your slope style, it starts right now. Biggest slope style competitions in the world. Last year's defending champ, Brandon Seminoff. Oh, oh. All about your Rock Shock Pump Track Challenge. And it goes to Adrian Laurent, the winner. Time to welcome the world here to Latest Alp. Crankworks France, slope style, the signature event of Crankworks about ready to get underway. But before we get started with the competition, let's check in with Dom Granger with more. Dom? That's right, Brad. Here in beautiful northern French Alps, Ledeux Alps, where it's world-class mountain biking, even skiing on the glacier in the summer. But we're here for one main event today, the signature events of Crankwork, Slope Style. And for more about that event, we're going to go check with Ryan Meyer. Well, we're definitely not here to ski, Dom, and the competition is really heating up. I say this year after year, and I'm sounding like a broken record, but it's really true. The competition level is on the next pier. I didn't think it was going to be able to get to this, but you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about in the near future. So back to you, Brad. Well, it is the year 2014, and social media playing a very big part in Crankworks. And if you're watching at home, you got some feedback, you want to say something, you want to take the pictures and send them in, make sure you do so, but hashtag everything Crankworks. Once again, hashtag everything Crankworks. We're under 30 minutes to go to get this big competition underway. And this is Yannick Granary design course, and he's been part of it for the last three years. And for more on the course, let's check in with my partner in crime, Ryan Meyer. Ryan? Well, I'm down here at one of the biggest features on course. This is the Mega Booter, and this is where all those big best tricks that we've been doing previous con separate contests for, this is where the riders are linking them up now into their final runs. You're going to be seeing a lot of massive tricks here. Maybe we'll even see some of the featured ones, double backflip, tuck no hander, cork 720, 360 flip. All those interesting tricks that you've been watching online are going to be happening in the riders' runs down here. And then talking about two more influential features that we have on course, we have the open loop. This is a debut feature that we have here at the Crankworks Le Duz Alp, and I've been seeing a lot of variation of the riders going inverted and hitting it like a spine where you go opposite and link back. This is going to be a very big trick for the judges and for the riders to link in for innovation. Then going up to the whale tail that we have, the Red Bull whale tail is a feature that we've had on the Le Duz Alp course many times before. However, we have a nice big kicker, a two foot kicker going into the disc this year, so we're going to be able to see a lot of big tricks in as well as out. And a great day here, ladies Alp, getting ready to get started here with your slope style competition signature event here, of course, at ladies Alp here in Crankworks. And before we get to it, we have a Dom standing by with a Crankworks regular. Let's send it down to her right now. Dom? I'm right here in the middle of the slope style course with Cam McCall. Cam, you have won twice in Colorado. You're, you've participated in many Crankworks slope style events. What is it like to ride in a slope style event like this one? And what is it like to win it? Yeah, I love slope style, man. This is the best. Like the first slope style contest I ever did was in Whistler, and then that turned into Crankworks. And now, fast forward, that was 11 years ago. So it's just crazy to think how far the sport has come. And you know, now we've got crazy features on the course. All the riders have the craziest tricks ever that are derived from BMX and Moto, and it's just kind of taken on its own shape and become its own sport. We've got an open loop on this course and stuff. And uh, today, things are going great. We've got tons of time to practice. The sun came out, it's drying up all the rain, the puddles are going away, everybody's having a blast, so I think it's shaping up to be a really good show today. And regardless of your result today, I mean, we're pretty sure we're going to see you in Whistler uh, this summer, later this summer in August. Uh, what Can you talk to us about, uh, about this event in Whistler? Yeah, I can't wait to get to Whistler. Like I said, that was kind of where I first rode slope style mm -hmm. ever, and you know, so it's just a tradition for me to come up there and this year be able to road trip up with my wife and bring my daughter. She'll get, we've got her little passport, you know, with her little, <laughs> little baby picture in there. So it's just a great vacation getting to Whistler. And so, you know, it's the same vibe here in France. It's just Crankworks just 7,000 miles away. And we love it and can't wait to get to Whistler and just keep the tradition alive. 
Well, thank you so much, Cam, and we are looking forward to see you ride here today and see what you got. All right, thanks a lot. Best riders in the world are here today, and I'll tell you what, tonight it's not over because we got Pump Track. That is coming up later tonight. Now it's time to check in with Dom, third member of our team, standing by with Brett Reeder. Dom? Thanks, Brad. I'm here with uh, with Brett Reader. Brett, you suffered a terrible back injury here last year on the flip with a bad crash. How is it to be back here at Leaders Alp on the same course than, uh, than your injury last year? It feels good to be back for sure. I, I'm, I mean, I'm a little bit, still a little bit intimidated, I guess, maybe a little nervous, but I'm just trying to block all that out and have fun. Well, and uh, so is it a big mental game to uh, to go back on the bike and on the same course? Yeah, I mean, after an injury like that, putting you out for three, four months and then having to come back is is definitely not an easy thing to do. But I'm, I'm healthy and I'm here and I'm uh, I'm ready to ride today. Cool. Well, we'll be cheering for you. Good luck out there today. And back to you, boys. Uh, thanks a lot, Tom. And it seems like uh, a tentative Brett Reader there, Ryan. Yeah, I think so. He's, he's a pretty humble and uh, honest guy, but I think he might be underrating his chances here at Le Duzel. <laughs> uh, I've been watching him in practice. He seems he looks very, very comfortable, and especially the, it's one of the guys who is, who is always comfortable on course and wants to deliver for the crowd. Uh, I, I think he's going to be able to, to do quite well at this contest. Yeah, an all-around rad free rider for sure, Brett Reeder right there. And, of course, this being the first Diamond Series stop, a six stops on the Diamond Series, and I'll tell you what, this is a big one. For more about that, check it out. It's all about the Diamond Series here at Crankworks. Well, this tour definitely suits. Uh, you have Brandon Semenak. Brad Reader and Semenak. Soderstrom. Reader. Hillgrave. Soderstrom. Semenak. Semenak. You'd be a fool to bet against Brett Reader. Thomas Genon. For me, a little bit underdog is like Thomas Genon. He's really consistent and smooth. He always has been, but now he's sort of got even better, which is awesome. Obviously, Martin, back from the leg break, but he's looking really good in practice at the last event. Yeah, you know, I'm uh, trying to keep my own expectations pretty low because I know I just had pretty much one month to prepare for the season, so um, that shouldn't be enough. So, uh, but yeah, obviously I hope for a good result. Everybody's been doing things that are blowing my mind and, you know, stuff I didn't know they could do, so I don't know, it's really, really up for the grab. Crankroot split us up. I heard some great things. I heard they have uh, an open loop there. Uh, should be pretty big. Usually courses, you kind of expect certain things to be there. And with Yannick, you never really know what to expect. So that should be interesting. Yannick's put an uh, open loop on the course. So that's going to be insane. Without a doubt, probably the scariest obstacle that um, the FMB Tour will bring this year. It's pretty easy to do it anyway. It's just a backflip in the end. So I guess everyone's gonna get used and used to, and then the level is gonna go higher and higher, and we're gonna see big tricks. On I'm 100% sure. I have some secret new tricks like never done before. I wanna pull there if there's good jumps. A really crazy thing going on if it works. <laughs> And that's a little something about your FMB Diamond Series. But there's a lot of things that you look for out here today. And I'll tell you what, the youngest guy out in the field, we're talking about Anthony Mazzari. What can you say about him, Ryan? Well, obviously, Canadian young gun, when he came out onto the course at Crankworks Whistler, that was the man that we were really looking for. He signed with Red Bull, and he's doing really good here in practice. I'm really excited to see him come down. Well, then, you talk about the young guys. There's a brand new guy new to the scene last year, talking about Nikolai Rogatkin. Woo. How about that guy? Woo. Totally brand new guy here to the season, and uh, especially one who has the massive tricks. He has a signature trick that we know as the lawn dart front flip, but he had a really, really hard crash. Just incredible that he's here. Oh, here, let's just take a look at it. Oh, 
man. Oh, wow. Just, uh, I think we might have another angle, but that was just insane. The, uh, yeah, we'll just take another look. Boom, snaps it and just over rotates and pretty much 20 feet to his head. Oh my gosh, how do you even even continue to ride off that? But let's talk about the defending champ. Seven podiums between France and Whistler. Brandon Semenuk out of Squamish. Yeah, just a charger of a character. S such a competitor, man. Every event that he comes to, he never comes to just compete. He comes to win every one. And you can never put him out of the top rankings. Well, these are the guys that he's going to have to beat. And these guys got some serious skills. Other than the uh, first two guys we talked about, they got some skills. But how about the rest of this uh, start list? Yeah, really, really jam-packed here. This is an invitational contest, obviously, within the FMB Diamond Series, and we have Canadians, uh, Americans all over Europe. Going through here, Anthony Missouri, who we just talked about, Ant Anton Bizet, Tyler McCall, Yannick Ranieri, Darren Bearclaw, Thomas Janot from Belgium, Cam Zink, Brett Reeder, just a really jam-packed crowd here. Kelly McGarry, the uh, native New Zealander, as well as Sam Pilgrim, Martin Sodestrom, just coming off that massive tib-fib break, only riding his bike for a couple months, and the top man, Brandon Semenuk from Canada. Well, it's time to get things fired up because we got the competition large and in charge. That's right here at Ladies Up, your slope-style event. That is coming up for don't go anywhere because it's coming up next. And we are just moments away to get this thing started. I'll tell you what, I have been waiting a whole entire year, just shy of a year, since Whistler Crankworks to see okay, another one the of these crowd. big old slope style events. Show. Brad J, Ryan Meyer, bringing it all to you. But Ryan, can you break down the format for us here today, sir? Well, it's quite quite standard format. We have the finalists. This is the Diamond Series of the FMB, obviously. So these riders are pre-qualified and entered in here. Invited riders, all the top caliber. So they're going to go down for two runs. Best run counts, and that's going to deter determine it. Very clean and simple. So what's the strategy in a situation like this? Are you trying to put down, I've talked to a lot of the riders, but are you trying to put down the best that you can do on your first run? Is that what you're going for? Well, I think it's actually getting into that these days because the trick difficulty level is so massive. Uh, going back to previous contests in the in the early start of the FMB year, uh, we had some events where all the top five riders were well into the 90s. And that is, that's almost unheard of for the competition level that we have yeah. here. So yeah, I think lately the riders are just gonna have to go for it right out of the gate, especially when you only have two runs and not a super final that gives you the extra third. Yeah, and that's the format that we use at Whistler Crankworks, but out here it's a different format being that the two-run formats, you don't have a lot of time to get her done, just two runs to make it happen. Well, it is time for the Dom Report. We're going to send things down to Dom Granger with more. Dom, take it away, girl. Hey, Brad. So you talked about the start list earlier, and I have an update about it. I just spoke with Martin Sardestrom, and uh, he will not be riding today. He suffered a concussion two weeks ago and fell on his head again today during practice. So unfortunately, he will not be able to ride today. So he'll be cheering for his uh, competitors from the sideline, but... Uh, no Martin on the course today. Well, I'll tell you what, that is sad indeed not to have uh, Martin Soderstrom out there. Well, this is how it's going to be. Greg Watts is supposed to be our first guy out there. And then we're going to be seeing Logan Pete, a guy who earned his way in. in and Dora, he, he got in on the podium, so he wasn't even going to be out here and laid his out. But Logan Pete earned his way in. And you look at the rest of the guys down there, and it's, it's just stacked all the way to the bottom from number one down to 20. It is a stack competition. And these guys ready to do battle out here at Les Duzel. Yeah, so as we're looking at the leaderboard there, yeah, unfortunately, we're not able to have Martin up into the mix, but we were talking to him earlier. He is going to be out here cheering on his friends. Concussion, yeah, it's a very serious thing that you have to deal with. Sometimes mentally, you think that you're all right until you get onto the bike and everything starts shaking and your balance is completely off. So good thing, though, we have Martin up here. He, he is going to be able to watch and cheer on his friends, so you guys concerned back at home, uh, he is doing okay. Well, you know what? You got to err on the side of caution in the situation. When you're talking about head injuries, and you're talking about coming back from that major leg break that he had last year, you want to err on the side of caution. Now we'll take our attention back up top here to start things off. 
And there we see our first rider, and that is Logan that is Pete. Logan Pete. So on our start list, we had Greg Watts, and I just actually heard information that Greg Watts is going to be bowed out. We have uh, the new feature, which I was just explaining to you into the rundown. We have the open loop, and uh, Greg actually ended up, he was trying to do a bar spin off of it, yeah. pulled back, like so without doing the overall full flip rotation, pulled back, like pulling back on a spine, and uh, he actually just went straight up yeah. and didn't get that back distance. He had to bail over the handlebars, and he said he, uh, seem to squeeze something in his back, wow. muscle or something, tweak like that. So he's he's actually not able to uh, get over the bike and, and make it down safely. So he said he's as well going to bow out. This means that we have the Canadian young gun riding for Santa Cruz Bicycles, Troy Lee Designs, and he is going to be going down. Logan Pete will be the first man on course. All right, well, let's take a look at what to watch for out here. Let's talk about what to watch for. Riding smart, what does that mean, Ryan? Oh, riding smart. I mean, we were just talking about uh, are you going to have to go for broke in the first run or are you going to save it a little bit? And this plays into a lot of the riders who have those big tricks on lock, like Brandon Semnuck. They're able to comfortably go and throw those combination things. I think they're looking at who is going to be able to uh, come come down yeah. and make a smart, educated run that isn't throwing them in, in any uh, pressure of crashing. So wait a minute, personality? Like, do you have to have an outgoing personality? Is that what this is all about? <laughs> yeah, I think all the riders are quite characters in that sense, but uh, what we're meaning here is the, the different styles that go to your run. You take a rider like Anton Bazet, he goes for broke right out of the gate, but that's his individual riding style. You watch riders like the one dropping right now, so clean and consistent, and he, do he doesn't do anything else that is not off his radar. All right, well, that's what to watch for. Here we go. Now we're going to get things started, and uh, Logan Pete taking his time up there. Boy, he's having a little, little lunch, a little something to drink, adjusting everything. Here we go, dropping in for his first run. This is Logan P. So if you guys have noticed, we have a couple ch course changes at the very start, but we keep this first wheel tail. 360 in, in opposite 360 out. Nice, no if we can. On, to, on top of this, we have an extra additional kicker to the top of that drop. Oh. Nice, solid 360 off that drop for Logan Pete. Coming into, there's wow. the open loop. Does the full open loop, nice and perfect. You see as the rider comes to an al almost dead stop, it's very uh, impactful, and that's what we were talking for Greg. Wow. Huge backflip over the road gap. Backflip bar spin over the next jump. Outside of that road gap section, coming up into the little spine hit. Truck driver over top of that. And let's see what he has. There's the kicker feature that I mentioned coming up into the Red Bull. Whale tail. Bar spin in, flip out. Nice tuck over the hip. This is linking up into a gorgeous run for Logan Pete. Huge double whip. Oh, oh just no. going down. No, say it isn't so. That was an amazing run, top to bottom, the last kicker, the big booter got him right there, Ryan. Oh, I couldn't help but think that uh, he, he almost had a flawed run, and maybe I even jinxed him. I should, I should keep my mouth shut as he was coming down. But Logan, Pete, man, you could see how clean and precise his riding was all the way to the last jump, and unfortunately just got a little nose in off that last double tail. Let's just take a look back at what's happening here. The 360 up, and there's another angle on that open loop. Such a unique feature. The rider has to air back about 10 feet. There's a nice solid backflip off the, it's almost a hipped road gap, actually, into a perfect Picture perfect backflip bar, then tuck no hander into the ditch off the kicker feature, backflip in, tuck no handers over the hip jump, and there's the double whip, gets a little off oh, balance, man. and throws it down to his right side. Oh, that is the sign of frustration. A guy that wasn't even in the competition about a month ago earned a spot by getting the podium at the last comp, so he earned his way out here today and having a flawless run until that last big booter at the bottom. But Logan will have another opportunity to put down a full pull. But still, it'll be the first score, and this is going to be the score to beat when this one comes in. Tomas Zeta coming up, Simon Godzik on the way, and the youngster, Nicolo Rogatkin. All right, well, we'll be back. We're going to get his score here in just a little bit. All right, so hang with us. We'll have the score for Logan Pete when we come back right after this. to the action here. Late is up, shadows of the French Alps. 57.5, that's gonna be Logan Pete's score. And Ryan, I mean, he doesn't go down there. That score is gonna be a lot different than a 57.5. Oh, that's just too bad for Logan Pete because as you were saying, these riders have to play it smart and they know only two runs they have. 
two runs, so just leaving one last one out for the man to make it onto the podium, and we know that that was kind of a safety run for him. All right, our next competitor, locked and loaded, ready to drop in here. Thomas Zaida. Thomas Zaida, Tomas Zaida now. Here he goes, first run for him. Score to beat 57.5. So we know that he has a lot of combinations with the tail whips and bar spins as he goes in. Oh! Tail whip to bar spin in a 360. Look back out of the dish. Pretty difficult to trick trick to get off a step down. Double, oh. double bar spin off yeah. the kicker step down. Airing the loop out. Kind of doing a court out flip on that one. Putting a little bit of his own flair into this into the road gap. I was looking for a tabletop, but not quite getting the click on that one. Nice solid bar spin to know if it can over the next feature. Oh! Oh, and he goes down in the berm. Not the spot that you would expect. Sometimes it's the easiest things that take you down. I mean, there are such big kickers out here and so many other elements in there, but the berm getting the best of Tomas right there. Yeah, a couple of uh, spectators might have been some collateral damage there. Hopefully they are all all right. But Thomas Side is going to get back up. Unfortunately, this is going to dock his flow points, his fluidity with the judges tremendously. Uh, just pretty difficult, though, that that went down not on a jump. Jumps right back into a perfect through over the spine into the dish. Nice X up out of the dish. Coming up in the hip jump. Not quite getting a trick off there, but some of the riders were saying that it's really difficult to, to get the speed for that hip jump and into a nice solid laid out Superman no foot can tail whip off the last jump for Thomas Zida. Well, for Zida right there and also for Pete, I mean, you got, you're got you trying to put down your most solid run you can do on the first opportunity to do it. So let's take a look at maybe possibly what went wrong if we get a chance to say that. Well, sometimes actually, uh, I, I guess it's really difficult with the tire selection. You see, we have another uh, little camera angle of that. Oh, and there was the 360 whip after he crashed. But after he came off the road gap, you have a ton of speed flowing into that next jump. And maybe he just couldn't grab enough uh, brake reduction with that single rear brake. Boy, the unfortunate thing about that is it puts a lot of pressure on you in a two run format. Then you have to put it together on your second and final run. So he's not, definitely not going to be happy with the score to come in. He's going to need something bigger. Right now it's a, a 57-5 to beat. And Zaida's going to check in, wait for that score to pop up here. 31-2-5. Uh, 31-2-5 is going to be that score for him. And he'll look to approve on that. Simon Godzi coming up. Then Nikolai Rodakin on the way. So a great day of action here. Ladies out, France. So take all of our attention back up top now. Sorry about that. Oh, Simon, Simon Gossiak, as we just saw a close-up of those tires, you can see some of these riders are, are riding tires mainly made for street riding or for dirt, uh, just like hard, compact trail riding. So when you have that much speed and you're going into a rock section, that that maybe is what threw them down. Well, here comes Simon Gossiak. We'll see what he has here. Doing for Dartmoor. Huge, nice, solid back of the bar spin into the dish and a 360 table out. Bar spin up top, coming around the bend, and let's see what he has into this step down feature. Nice, nice whip. And going for the open loop as well with a back flip one foot can. That is the unique trick that we haven't seen yet out of that. Solid style with the one foot tabletop. A lot of riders. Oh! Huge wow. tsunami Superman. Extension. And a big flat spin 360. Coming up into the Red Bull, Whale Tail. Nice back flip out. He did get a trick in, but that was a solid trick out. Just making it over top of that hip jump. Huge laid out to Penn. <laughs> and Simon's going to like that one. He can almost get a rock solid out of that with the extension that he has on that Superman double grab. Just incredible. Well, let's see if we can take a look at some of these replays here. Score to beat is Logan Pete's 57.5. As we see him jumping back into the dish and with the 360 table out, here was the nice tail whip. 
And he does the backflip one foot can over this open loop feature. Very unique trick to be coming out of there. Oh, wow. Look at the Superman extension on that. I love watching that trick. You mentioned it so many times. Supermans are one of the funnest feeling tricks for myself personally. And I love seeing it when those riders can get the bike so extended. Look at that double grab. No one on this planet can do that that good on a mountain bike. There is a, It's a motocross trick, right? And you have so much more weight coming for it. And look at the score. 72.25 for Simon right there. So it takes over the top spot with that one. He's got to feel pretty good right there, getting the full pull. And you know what? There was room for another trick. He saw him straight air, one of the jumps out there. See if he can. Yeah, there is definitely some room for improvement that we know that he's able to do. All right, well, I'll tell you what. Nikolai Rogatkin. Here's a kid you want to pay close attention to. If you don't know who he is, he was new to the scene last year. Well, why don't you take a look? This is Nikolai Rogatkin. Check it out. The new guys on the scene definitely, they got stuff to prove and they're hungry, which is the biggest thing. They're willing to go for it. Nikolai especially, he's got humongous tricks. He just did 10 cash roll in, in just in practice here. Which I'm looking at like, what the hell am I going to do on here? And he's just already straight into crazy maneuvers. I was like, what? I'm pretty looking forward to see him on slopestyle course to see how he goes. And when I see what he can do on a BMX, he's going to probably push the limits of mountain bike too. Hey, Nikolai Rogakin, 18 years old, from Boston, Massachusetts, and a professional bike rider. I've been riding BMX professionally since age five, and uh, just last year I started riding mountain bikes, and uh, this year I'm going full on for the uh, FMB World Tour, so it's my rookie year right now. The acceptance has been awesome. All the guys have been so good to me. I've known them since I was 13 years old, so them seeing me riding mountain bikes, they're stoked now, and I'm stoked to be here, so it's, it's been really good. Well, here he is, ready to do battle right here. Four top five finishes so far this season. A first place at 26 tricks. He has been on fire. Let's see what he has right now. Drop it in for his first run today. Put your hands together for Nikolai Rogatkin. Oh, you see that nervous look of determination on his face, and we just... So I'm dropping huge Superman C crab into the dish, landing low, however, still getting that no foot can out. Bar spin up on the top feature. He does say that he comes from a BMX background. You can see that in some of the tricks as he goes for some of the big ones like triple whips and cash rolls. And he links that up nice with a cork flip coming off of that open loop. Let's see what he has into the road gap. This is testing his real mountain bike style as that's a very big feature for a slope style course. Lawndark front flip. Oh! Oh! And that's a redemption because as we saw in the pre-show, he went down so hard in practice the other day with that trick. Linking up, tail whip up into the dish. Tuck no hander out of that big Red Bull whale tail. Flowing into the hip. Not quite getting a trick. Looks like it was just pumping over. Triple whip! The triple whip to seal it with the exclamation point of that run. Wow, is he pumped. <laughs> man, going for that in the first run, triple tail up on the oh, last man. jump. It looks like I, I was saying, oh, it looks like he's long jumping that one. I think it was maybe just a setup jump coming up into that triple whip. Such a yeah. big trick to pull in your first run. I think you hit the nail on the head right there, a setup jump for that big one right there. He knew what he wanted to do. He wanted to stomp it with the triple, and he puts that one down super solid. Take a look at these replays. And this shows a lot of the personality for his riding style as we're talking about the key elements of slope style that we need to watch these days. Just like we saw in that Red Bull clip of the 2-6 the tricks where he did that cash roll on the first jump of his run, he is always determined and super confident in his riding style. Well, God seeks in the number one spot with the 72 2 5 and just look at that with authority. All right, let's check and set it down to Dom. Dom? Nikolai! That was determination right there. A triple whip. You did not go for the safe run. How, what goes through your head when you go for something like this? After such a long course, you're so tired, and you just got to give it all you got in this last jump, and I did, and thankfully it, it worked out for me, so I'm so happy right now. Well, good work, and we'll see you guys up there again. Oh, wow, man. I, get some, I am a Nikolai Rogatkin fan right now, 100%. Just to see him come out and do that. What's the score going to be for this? This has got to be large. 
It's got to be the 72-25. And he's done it, a 75.5 for Nikolai Rogatkin. That's going to put him in the top spot. The youngster coming out swinging out here today. Woo, I'm sure uh, his sponsors are all loving him these days. They were just getting back on board before he came into this tour. Just the new guy, and you see why he is doing so well these days on the FMB. Well, this next competitor, he's had three top five finishes so far this year. He has been on fire. Currently ranked 13th in the FMB World Tour rankings, but he's ready to do it right now. Dropping in for you next. Doing it for Polygon. Let's hear it for Sam Reynolds. Woo, Reynolds is such a fun guy to watch and such a good guy to have around the slope style scene. Back from the tuck no hander into the dish. Tail whip out. Nice and clean style out of the British man. Tabletop up top coming around this uh, little bend of a step down 360. I love it how he flo flows that trick in, links it up with the turn that he was already making. Goes for the open loop with a nice solid backflip. Let's see what Sam has into this road gap hip. Tuck no hander going off to the right side and into this big jump. Huge air wall. So the uh, dangling man, no foot can, no hander. So no foot can, nothing. 360 table over the spine. X up into the Red Bull whale tail. Big back flip out. Let's see what Sam Reynolds has. No foot cam topside on that hip. Really hard to trick. And a big flip oh, whip. Wow. So sealing that one with the flip whip. As you, we might be able to catch in the replay, he uh, came off almost kind of short on that no fit can on the uh, on the hip, setting up before the big mega jump at the bottom here. Well, we saw we saw Nikolai kind of do a setup air going into the yeah, last hit. Scary. What we saw with Sam right there, tricking both the last one, including that oh, flip whip at that. the end. So it's going to be in the judges' hands if we check these replays. So as this run was getting warmed up here, 360 off that first first drop and then coming into the open loop. Look at that, no foot can, nothing. Kind of like the running man. And uh, just putting a foot down, sliding around, making sure that he didn't make the same mistake as Thomas Zaida did. And into this, off the kicker feature, one foot X up into the dish and a back flip out. And then he had that top side no foot can where it seemed like he almost was able to come up a little bit short. And that's why you see him pull that back flip, tail whip just around so that he didn't case with his nose on that landing. Score to beat is that 75-5. That's what Nikolai Rogatkin had was the 75-5. So if he could beat that score, he would take sole ownership of the top back, spot. I think I'm going straight. With Peter Henke and beer. Cam McCaw, Anthony Mazzari, Antoine Bazet all to follow. Score coming in should be a good one. It is an 80.25. Sam Reynolds into the top spot right there with that score. Boom, I'm, I'm going to tell you that he is ecstatic with that run. Well, let's take a look at the leaderboard right here to break things down for you. There you go, you got Sam Reynolds top spot, 80.25. Rogatkin holding down number two with a 75.5. Godzik in that number third spot, and that's how it's playing out with Pete in the uh, next spot in four. So that's how it's going right there. Coming up, Hanky on the way, McCall on the way, Missouri on the way when we come back. And there we go right now, we're taking a look at this huge crowd on hand for you, packing the slope style course, two run format. But right now, Sam Reynolds, who's been having an amazing year, Ryan. I mean, you know, fifth out there in Montpellier and then fifth in uh, 26 tricks, fourth Hall of Dirt. So he's been in the top five three different events. Yeah, Sam, Sam's run actually for 26 tricks was one of the most incredible runs I've seen. Such innovation, he was doing nothing to cannonballs, uh, no foot can, uh, air walks as well, like we just saw here. And he did the first ever bike flip on a mountain bike in a mountain bike contest in the middle of his run. So just some phenomenal, innovative riding coming out of the and grid. Bike uh, bike flip brought from uh, Zach Ward, I think in the BMX world, one of the first guys to do that. So it's good to see that making its way into uh, free riding. So let's see, the rest of our competitors are getting ready to go. Peter Henke on the way. Cam McCall, the legend. Anthony de Mazzari, we talk a lot about him. Antoine Bazin, Yannick Granary, who had a lot to do with designing this course. He'll be coming up as well. The Claw on the way. Thomas Genon. So a stacked field here today. Lay out right here in the French Alps. 
Brad Jay and Ryan Meyer bringing it to you. Slope style event for you. And big ups, of course, to uh, Cam Zink taking the win in speed and style. That was yesterday. And back to Leda's Alp right here in France. It is all about slope style. As our slope style competitors doing things in a big way, Sam Reynolds, your leader, 80.25. Rogatkin dropping the triple tail whip on the last jump, 75.5. Pete Hanka, the German rider in the gate, newly rocking that uh, Red Bull helmet on the top of his head. The thing, though, with Pete Hanka, the tough man, he has a broken rib right now. Uh, so here goes Pete Hanka to start things off here for him. So he's been uh, saying it's really been bothering him, that rib, but it doesn't look like it as he goes in for a nice Superman C grab Indian Air and 360 out of the dish. Tuck no hander up. He is getting all the tricks off of each feature, and that is something that you need to do to make it into the podium. Backflip and a back oh, oh, tuck oh, no oh, hander. Oh, no, no. Oh. And then you see him right there. You talked about the rib holding on to those ribs. Uh, unfortunately, he wasn't able to hold on that. Looked like it was going to be a phenomenal run. First rider who I've seen do a big trick like that off the open loop. Pete, however, is going to go down and keep continuing on with his run, airing a nice little bit of style over that. Yeah, so he's just going to flow down to the very bottom. He knows this is going to be a throwaway. Hopefully, he's uh, saving that rib for his last run. 360 over the spine, into the dish. Nice and smooth and simple, making it all the way down to the bottom. He'll grab the tram up and see what he can do for the second run. But it looked like it was going to be a nice, nice run for Pete at the very very top. And I'd really like to see that fall through. And, and Ryan, in a situation like that, you have the fall up top. You know that it's not going to be a good score. Is it all just about coming down, cruising, and just make things happen in your next run? Yeah, that's basically where it's at now, and especially as you only have one other chance. He's uh, yeah. toughing it out quite a lot and making it in here. Look, that was a nice bar spin off that feature and a really extended back flip tuck no hander. He maybe could, oh, unfortunately goes right back into the dish, almost going into a full loop. If he could have maybe got a little bit more over to the left, that would have uh, favored him, but I'm sure, I'm sure he'll be able to get back up to the top and do, yeah. it, do it better. Kind of like casing that landing a little bit, not just costing the speed, having to step up, and he'll look to improve on that. 19, obviously not going to get them, get him in the mix from Germany. But he'll have another shot at it as we take our attention back up top. Here we go. Wow, he means so much to free riding. This man right here, talking about Cam McCall. Yeah, thank you. The score that he is looking to beat is an 80.25. Here he is next. Cam McCall dropping in. So what a veteran to the sport and still keeping up with these young boys. Up a whip in, regular whip out of the dish. Bar spin up into the drop feature and a nice 360 out. That was a regular 360 for Cam. He is a goofy foot rider and then backflip into the open loop. Coming up into the road gap. Suicide no hander oh, off the road nice. gap. Nice variation in the tricks there. Under flip, back flip. Kind of a reader flip there. 360 over top of the spine. Let's see what he has coming up into the Red Bull satellite. Huge backflip out of the dish. I see him setting up over this hip jump. Nice bit of style. It's the Santa Cruz local flows down here. Huge flip. Oh, no, no. Oh, and that that is the hard way to crash when you have no other room than to land at the flat bottom on your feet. Looks like he's quite OK, though. Just going to take a little bit of breather. More of a situation, thumbs up. For him. More of a situation, you're just frustrated at that point. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. But, uh, thumbs up, Bonnie. You can relax at home. Everything's all right. I'm sure Cam's <laughs> going to be up and ready yeah, to go for another up. one. Well, putting together a solid run, if you may remember, of course, Cam got on the podium third place in 2012 in Whistler. So just a so. couple years ago. And as I uh, keep mentioning, everyone's going for the backflip off that open loop. I'm uh, still mentioning that they're doing the backflip scene as there are people who are just going to go straight and do the, the link back. So as we get into a couple other riders down the field, I'm sure you will see exactly what I'm talking about in that sense. And let's see, he popped up in here. A nice, perfect backflip coming out yeah. of the dish. And the flip whip. Look, he was just a tiny bit too slow for that. As I mentioned, a lot of the riders are not getting the exact speed that they need. 
So Cam score a 38 to five to score for Cam McCall right there. And he'll be in the fifth spot with that score. And a frustrated Cam McCall, but he's gonna have one more run to get her done out here as we take it all back up and uh, get ready for our next guy. And here he is right now, made a name for himself with uh, getting on a podium a few years back when he was about 15 years old in Whistler. Got himself a, a joyride getting up top spot. Well, here he is right now, Anthony Mazzari, coming in for you next. Okay, this is this is the boy that we need to watch. He has so many tricks dialed, and he looks really on point this weekend. Truck driver out of the dish, bar spin opposite way up into the step up feature. Huge back wow. off of the drop, coming into the open loop. There you go, a straight jump with a bar spin. That is the most unique one I have seen today off the open loop. Downside tail whip over the road gap into the flat jump. Huge flip whip, so oh. much amplitude, and he holds on like a champ. Coming up into the spine jump, 360 downside whip. Look at this run. Going up into the kicker, bar spin into the dish, pedaling in because he can't still getting the back flip out. The man is on fire. Oh! That was one of those runs that he was putting together, a solid right there. Ah, you saw he just didn't have the speed linking up after that bar spin when he came up into the Red Bull dish, he cased. And what a trooper, he didn't even stop. He pedaled throughout the satellite dish and popped into the back foot, but still couldn't get that speed as he linked up around the berm for the, for the hip jump. So Anthony Mazzari on his first run, and a lot of the riders talking to him earlier today is saying, watch for Mazzari, if he gets to that last jump and he's still up and he's had no problems, he could take it out here. So he'll have another shot, like you said, that little case kind of cost him. Take a look at these replays. Oh, this was this was a winning run, in my opinion. He had everything that was needed. Innovation yeah, like that, yeah. hop back to bar spin. That's where his BMX up. And look, just a little bit of a case. Oh, that was Pedals it. into the dish to still get that backflip and cases again. Trying to pedal around, but could not get enough speed to make the next jump, and that's where you it know, all ended for him. You gotta give him credit. Press the eject button in there. You know you're gonna case that landing. You know you're not gonna land that. He just had to eject it and uh, put all his eggs in one basket for run number two. But this is the style of Missouri, going for gold all the time. That's what they say, 28.75. 28.75. That'll put him in the seventh spot right there for him. So Antoine Bazette, he is coming up for you next. What a great day indeed. Late is out. Antoine Bazette looking to try and beat an 80.25 for the Frenchman. There's a look at your standing so far. Reynolds with the 82.5. Rogatkin in second. Godzik in that third spot. And Pete in that fourth spot with a 57.5. Those are your score to beat just to crack into the top four. But another rider with those massive innovative tricks that he's linked up into his into his runs, like we saw at the two six tricks in Leo Gang, double backflip, tuck no hander. So maybe we'll see if he gets that. There was a an opposite whip to regular whip into that dish. Seems like he's going for a nice solid run here. Bar off, floating there. Another oh, another rider going for just the straight air off the open loop. But dabbed a foot down, that's gonna cost him a tiny bit with the judges, but maybe it's making it back with that back foot over the step down. Huge front oh. Let's see what he has into this spine feature. Court three, and he goes the opposite way on those 360s. Backflip into the dish! Backflip, <laughs> tuck no hander out of the dish. First and only rider that we've seen backflip into the Red Bull whale tail. The double! double. The double. And he ghost rides the bike at the end. Antoine Bazette, bam, he means business. Showing you the horns. That is some good stuff out of there. A lot of creativity, but the foot dab, will that cost him? You think he can take over the top spot? Yeah, that that's definitely, I, oh. <laughs> This is why I don't judge. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like judges have such a little time frame, but there's a foot down that definitely is going to cost him on his flow points from the judges. But check out, nice front flip. So he had variation within his trick difficulty, going court 360s, front flips, back flips, back flip into the dish here. The only rider that you're going to be, well, at least so far, see doing that back flip. Linked up nice on the hip and the double back flip. 
right there to finish it off, off the mega jump. Well, and I didn't think he was gonna have the height to be able to get that double in, but he was able to land that thing solid. And we'll see what the score coming in. Score to beat an 80.25. But you gotta think the judges are gonna ding him a little bit. Let's see what happens here. 65.75 for Antoine Bazette. That's gonna put him in fourth for the Frenchman right there. And yes, because of that. Well, let's take a look at how things are shaping up so far here in run number one. Sam Reynolds, 80.25. USA's Nikolai Rogatkin in number two spot. And Simon Godzink in that third spot. That's your one, two, and three. Well, we'll be right back with more first round action when we come back here. Latest out, Crankworks. And now we uh, take, go back up top. Ooh. Here we go. Dropping in for you. He's not waiting for anyone. Here we go. Yannick Renneri dropping in. Oh. Just a fighter. You can see with the dirt on his jersey. Front flip into truck driver out. Tuck no hander up. Yannick has had a pretty hard day, but he's fighting tonight. Oh, unfortunately, missed the grab on that bar. Went down hard off that drop. You know, and we saw him go down earlier today in practice. So, like you said, he's been having a rough go today. And you know what, it's just one of those days, sometimes it's your day, sometimes it's not your day right now. I know, and I, I feel so bad for him. He's been going for it all day, and I've, I've seen him have a couple slip-ups uh, coming up short twice on this last jump in tricks and going down really hard, so he's really fighting and trying to push through it. I mean, course designer, his home crowd, he's really wanting to do have a good result here, but yeah, sometimes just the day isn't meant for you. But you know what, he, he's a tough customer. He's gonna go back up top. He's gonna have a second run. If he's uh, gonna elect to take it, we'll see see how that shapes up for him. You can see you can see the frustration in his face right there. And you know, I, I don't blame him right there. He helps design these courses year after year. Let's see what happened here. See if we can call this out. So just got a little off backseat. balance back seat on that bar and went, went down, looped out of it. Oh, it looked like his hand got, got kind of twisted up as he was trying to bus drive that bar around. Well, there he is right now. Unfortunately, that score a 9.5. Obviously, that's not going to get it done. All right, well, it's time for your GoPro course preview. A guy who's coming up next had a chance to test run this course, and courtesy of the claw, your GoPro course preview. Take a look at this. There he is right there, the claw getting ready to go. So the claw able to uh, run on down this course earlier. So if we can get it for you, we'll try to see if we can get it for you. Maybe a... Where did he fall? All right, let's take a look at this is the claw with the GoPro course preview. Take a look. All right, my name's Darren Burkloff, and here we are at Crankworks Ladies Alps. I'm gonna take you to a uh, GoPro course preview. Let's check it out. All right, rolling in. Nice little berm. Coming out of the berm. Nice little step up. Get boosty. Little step down. Little step up. Watch the traffic. Coming around. Down. Lander, coming into the road gap. And a big old quarter pipe booter. Nice coffee. Coming in the line. Nice. Nice. Step out. Ladies out, course preview. You. This competition goes 
And there you go, courtesy of the claw, your GoPro course preview right there, breaking it down. You, you see him hit the on switch right there, so he's ready to do it again. Doing it for Specialized, 32 years young. Dropping it next, here comes the claw. Always having a fun time out here at these events as well. Nice tail whip up. 360 tabletop, very claw-esque as he comes up into the step up with a bar spin. Indian Air, that's one of the tricks that he perfected. One of the few riders to do Superman sea grabs off drops and linked it up with the Indian Air just a couple years ago. That's a signature move for Darren Bearclaw. One foot tabletop, another signature trick for him. Superman sea grab over the big jump, getting nice extension on that. Flowing into the spine with the 360 opposite way. And up into the dish, tuck no hander. Huge 360 off, gets the rotation around. That's a much more difficult trick to do yeah. over that than a backflip. Popping into the last jump. Yeah. A nice 360 oh. table from Claw. Yeah. The Claw right there, top to bottom, coming down with a solid run. We'll see where that puts him with the scores. Right now, trying to beat Reynolds is 80.25. Claw's got to be very happy right now. Let's take a look at these replays, Ryan. So he had that nice bar spin up in the signature. Superman Sea Crab, Indian Air, off of the drop. Making that loop happen with the backflip. And the Superman Sea Crab there, you get the extension from Darren. And he popped out yeah. into the dish with a nice tuck, no hander, and a 360 out. That's much more difficult to do than a backflip. You have to uh, totally traverse your axis. And a 360 table, finishing it off for the Canadian. Well, now it is up to the judges. Let's see where they put him with the score as he waits for his score. Score to beat 80.25 for Reynolds. Gakin in second with a 75.5. Godzik with a 72.25 in third. So those are your scores just to crack the top three out here and lay this out. Crankworks, the 2014 version here. And you can see that you are crazy. Now these guys are just free riders having fun, doing what they love. Score coming in 61.5, top five right there for him. He'll go into the fifth spot with that score, Ryan. Yeah, nice solid to see Darren out here competing as well and putting together a nice full run on his first go. That's uh, yeah, really, really nice to see the man link it up. The Canyon Bicycles, I see something big coming here. Oh, the man. Belgian. Yeah, and, and you think about what he did. He really made a name for himself in Whistler in 2012. He won out there in Crankworks, and here he is, Thomas Genon, dropping in next. And a rider who always had the tricks but over the offseason, you can see his style has been totally perfected. Oh, slipping a pedal on that 360 whip that is very uncharacteristic for this rider. But getting a nice whip off that drop, making the open loop into a backflip. And let's see what he has off the road gap for Thomas Geno. Tommy G with a nice big whip. Ups. Oh, and a double tail. Oh. Flowing into the spine, 360 downside whip for Tommy G. And up into the Red Bull Cannon, tuck no hander in, tail whip out, and into the hip jump. Miss what he actually had off that in the last jump with the flat spin 360. So the flat spin three to kind of end things, but now we've saw what the judges do. If you have a little bit of a mishap out there, they're gonna ding you on the score. You gotta think he's gonna get dung in that little mishap up top. Definitely, uh, I wouldn't. You wouldn't quote me on this, but I believe uh, a pedal slip is around a 10 point deduction if you uh, wow. if you dab your foot completely on the ground in the on the ground for a balancing uh, position. Yeah. And that's what happened with Tommy on the uh, three whip at the top of the course. Well, here's but Tommy a nice Key. top side whip on off, over that road gap, linking into a double whip. Very clean style. And then the 360 downside whip, tuck no hander in. Big whip out. And the flat spin 360 coming over the last mega jump. So we'll see what the score for Tommy G. I like your nickname. Did you drop that on him, Tommy G? <laughs> Uh, I think uh, Taylander actually uh, linked that one up. But yeah, that's, that's pretty much what everyone's calling him these days, Tommy G. 
Oh, Tommy G. You're talking about hashtag clean lander? Okay. <laughs> yeah, hashtag clean lander. So it's, it's like into hashtag more now. Like <laughs> M, M with the like Swedish A circle thing above, A yeah. circle thing, and then an H. I don't know how to pronounce it at all. That's like his own hashtag. You can go search that on Instagram. But yeah, let's hashtag Tommy G. You can uh, find him as well on the social media. Yeah, hashtag Tommy G. All right, does he have enough to get up in the top five or even the top three? Somewhere around there. 68.5, so he's, uh, you know, come see, come saw. I'll take that. Fourth place right there for him. And now Cam Zink. Wow. Already a winner yesterday. He did it in speed and style. Took the big win on the 4th of July for America. And the Greg Watts grabbing second yesterday. So he's already got some hardware for ladies. <laughs> and just such a fun guy. And what an ambassador to free riding. This dude is right here. We're talking about Cam Zink. There's the American flag on top of that helmet. He's ready to do business right now. Next up, it is Cam Zink. Giving a nice shout out to the family watching back at home. He had a nice, gorgeous baby girl born over the off season. One foot X up backflip into the dish, no foot or out. It looks like he just landed a little bit too far down to get the rest of the trick, but solid run. Starting it for Zink, no dangler. So uh, no foot one hand and a one foot X up. Going as well, not for the open loop backflip, but making it just a spine transfer. And into the step down feature. Flip for Zink, linking up into the flat jump. Oh, and not getting a trick. That's uh, unfortunate. Uh -oh. But coming into the spine, <laughs> I think he's going to have a bit of fun flowing into this dish. One foot X up in, just coming out. He knows that uh, he needs to link up a perfect run to get on top of the board. And as we know, Zink has already taken two gold medals in Crankwork Slope Style Whistler, one of the only two riders who have done that in the Whistler history. As well, Cam McCall has been able to take two previous gold medals uh, for his other future slope styles that we had at Crankworks. But yeah. Cam knows that what he needs to do to, to get the first spot, and I think that's what he wants, well, going back for the second run. Well, you remember, Cam Zink, That'd third right place now. in 2005, so that's a long time ago, but he has been a mainstay. Take these replays right here at Cam Zink. So one foot X up in to no footer. I think that threw his game off a little bit, and then uh, ended up just missing that jump on the, the straight jump after the road gap backflip. He, he tagged it a tiny bit, so maybe he got a little, little uh, blown or had a tiny bit of difficulties on that road gap. I think he's going to go back up top and make it all down link up. All right, well, let's set it down to Dom standing by with Cam Zink. Dom? So, Cam, you first podium in 2005 at Crank Works. Can you tell us a bit the difference about the riding then and now? It's almost 10 years. It has come a very long way, and I think the, the courses have helped with that. Um, but, yeah, just a long, long while of progression and now it's actually at the point where there's finally a new crop of kids that could watch us when we were kids you know because I was 18 at the first one and McCall was as well and um, you know we were we were developing the sport essentially so we were there we didn't have anyone really look up to we were like the first people in the slope style contest so now there's actually people that watched us and that have have grown up doing that because we grew up trying to be racers or whatever you know and and because it didn't really exist so now it's sick because it's come a long way. The kids actually can start riding a bike hoping to ride slope style one day. And are we going to see you in Whistler in August? Absolutely. That's like my favorite time of year, favorite place to be. The crowd there is like 20,000, 30,000 strong. And best feeling in the world, finishing a run at Crankworks into that finished corral. Thanks a lot, Cam. Back to you, gentlemen. I, well, we're not really gentlemen, but thank you so much, Tom. But I'll tell you what, Cam Zink, I'm going to go out and get a Cam Zink tattoo right now because he definitely is my hero. He has just been doing it for so so long. Uh, tremendous, tremendous free rider, Cam Zink. We look forward to seeing him in Whistler. Look forward to his uh, second run. So he's in the eighth spot with a 53-5 as we take our attention. This guy got injured out here last year and a tough go at it. Still ended up pretty strong in the FMB rankings because he still had a decent a decent year going up until his injury. But he's trying to get that monkey off his back. Here we go right now. This is Canada's very own Brett Reeder. Yeah, clean slate though this year. Nice front flip into the dish. Such perfect rotation. 360 bars been out. Solid truck driver. Popping up into the step of what does he have off the drop? Nice downside tail whip. And making the open loop with the backflip. Super solid on the landing, not putting a bobble at all into his weight shift. Oh, oh, downside whip slipping the pedals. 
not being able to get a trick either over the next jump. Let's see if he's going to try and save it with some following features. 360 over the spine. Popping into the dish, popping out. Looks like yeah, he's going to yeah. hold it as well for run number two. Well, I, to me, I'm sorry. I just think it's, I think it's smart riding when you do that. <laughs> you know, it, oh, the reader flip, man. Uh, I don't know anyone else who has so much style into one single simple backflip. <laughs> you said it right there. Brett Reader going to look to a second run. That's definitely not going to be a big score that he's looking for. To crack the top three, got to beat a 72 2 5. Good Zeke with that score right there in that third spot. So here's the replays. So there was a nice downside whip off that first drop, rolling the backflip, and it was all very smooth here. But then when he came into the road gap, got another downside whip there. It was opposite and just couldn't hold on. It looked like he got a little off axis when that uh, frame was rotating around and threw everything off for him for the next run. Yeah, you know, you miss a beat, you lose the rhythm, and that's kind of what happened to him right there. He'll look to his second run. We'll wait that score to come in for him. Not going to be the score that he is capable of putting up. 44.75 for Brett Reeder. Top 10, ninth place for him. And then it is time for the Kiwi. That's right, Kelly McGarry doing it in a big way for Diamondback. Ended up on the podium out there in Rampage last year. Such a great rider and such a good guy to watch and such a good guy to hang out with. Here he is right now, what? Kelly McGarry. One of the most viral clips we've ever had in mountain biking was that flip over the road gap. Doing another flip here in Landu's out for the crowd. Jumping into that step in with a 360 out. Let's see what he has off the first drop. Nice X up out of the Kiwi. And popping back, not as high amplitude as some of the other riders, but still making it nice and clean and linking a lot of flow into his run. Tabletop off of that right hip step down. Huge back to the Condor. Oh. Rolling into the spine. Bar spin out of Kelly. Actually, rider I've never seen do a bar spin. Into the satellite dish with the back flip out. And let's see on the hip jump. Just linking it up. Does he have the speed for it? Oh, and going for the front flip, not getting the snap necessary, unfortunately. But ever so close for Kelly McGarry. Just a game of millimeters for him right there. Not quite able to bring that around, like you said. Not getting the pop, the pop needed to land that fronty for Kelly McGarry. Yeah, uh, unfortunate for Kelly, but I'm sure he's going to go back up. And he always has so much fun coming out to these contests. He's been doing it for so long as well, a course builder, and uh, just looking to do everything possible to progress the sport. Great guy to have out here for Crankworks. Yeah, indeed. Kelly McGarry showing you the replays right here. Nice backflip. Look at the hair. It almost blinds him in so long. <laughs> I don't know what I would think of if he ever cut that, those, that hair of his. <laughs> All right, so Kelly McGarry will wait for the score. Where does he end up? Top three, you need a 72, 2 five. Above that for the top three right now. Rogatkin in second, Reynolds in the top spot. And definitely not going to be a good score for him. But you never know if he could get that front flip in there, maybe land it on the second run. Yeah, 22-5, as we thought. Well, now it comes down to this man right here, Brandon Semenuk, your defending champion, not only from Ladies Out, but also from Crankworks Whistler, a man that seems like he can do anything. So many podiums. The most out of any slope style rider when it comes to Crankworks, Brandon Semenuk has been doing it year in and year out. So Brandon Semenuk, and you know what? It's a very doable score for him to beat with an 80.25. Here we go, dropping in for his first run. This is Brandon Semenuk. I have goosebumps on the back of my neck. Backflip bar spin into the dish. 360 bar spin out. Opposite way for the bar spin coming up. And a nice downside whip. I believe that was an opposite whip and backflip one foot can, making that a unique feature for him in that open loop. Let's see what he has. Cork flip oh. on, on that hip, step down. Cork 720, oh. mid run. What, mid run? Mid run, 
26, he downside no. whip and he misses the pedals. Still getting the tuck no hander up into the dish. 360 bars, but truck driver out. What does he have on the hip jump? Downside whips the hip jump. Coming into the last feature. Oh, it looks like it went a double opposite tail whip. It's still not catching the pedal, so two uncharacteristic moves from the Canadian Brandon Semenuk. Yeah, you can tell that he, he expects perfection and he delivers perfection time in and time out. That's definitely not one of his perfect runs. And with a couple baubles in there, that should cost him some points. And I think Reynolds is going to be safe in that top spot. Check these replays out. Yeah, that was definitely a trick that would bump Reynolds way out of the lead. But opposite whip in, backflip, one foot can. That was where everything was perfect. Coming in here, there was the backflip, and he landed a little to the right on this, had to pedal into the next jump for the Cork 720, but came so perfect on wow. that. And here we go, the 360 downside whip just doesn't yeah. get the perfect rotation on the three. That's what messed him up at the very start. And this double opposite whip on the last jump. Cases it, yeah. Oh, too, too bad for Seminar. Lands right on that Never knuckle. So now the pressure is going to be on him to deliver his second run. When you got a two run format, it gets your back up against the wall. But if anyone can do it, Brandon Semenuk can do it. Because we've seen him come back swinging time and time again. So Semenuk, we wait for that score to come in. And second runs coming up for all the competitors. As Semenuk, since he's the defending champ, we'll go back up top of the order. Second run's coming up with the score coming in. Where is that going to put him with those baubles? As the judges definitely taking their time because that cork seven was a thing of beauty out of Semenuk. That was the highlight for me on that run. And that's where it makes it difficult, isn't it? When you have such big tricks landed so smoothly and then just the little ones, you have the foot dab. But like I was saying, <laughs> the judges have to deduct for things yeah. like this. It's one of those things. It's like you can land the hardest stuff and then some of the little stuff will get away from you. And uh, unfortunately, got the best of uh, Semenuk on that first run. But once again, you know he's got another run. And I have a feeling. He's going to put something up big. And there you go, 70.75. Yes, he had the two bobbles, but that cork seven helped the score get up in the 70s. Well, let's take a look at the full leaderboard here and break it all down for you right now. This is how it is playing out for you. There you go, Sam Reynolds, Nikolai Rogatkin, number two. Simon Godzik in that third spot. That's your one, two, and three. And we'll be back. Second and final runs coming up live from Leda Zop here for Crankworks. Crankworks laid us out here, and of course, slope style in charge here, finishing up the first runs from all of our competitors. And the second and final runs coming up. Here's how it's playing out. Simon Gozik in that third spot. The Polish rider at 72.25. Nikolai Rogatkin in that second spot for the USA, a 75.5 for him. And then Sam Reynolds, the man of the day so far with an 80.25. Or the man for the first runs out of Great Britain in that top spot. And you can see the rest of the competitors out there trying to swing for the fence on their second and final runs coming up for them. But a two-run format, this is where you got to do it. But, but Ryan, I mean, you've been here for a few years. Late is out. Amazing trails out here, right? Yeah, what, what an incredible place. I mean, we've talked so much about having fun on the mountain here, and this is one of the spots that just brings everything to us. World, world class riding from all ages. You know, you can come and ride with all the pros day in, day out, and such a good event and such a good place to host it here. Well, epic free riding at its best out here, and just having some fun on uh, some of the great trails out here. I'll tell you, I mean, it's not if you can't ride Whistler and you're out here in Europe and this is where you live. This is the next best thing as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, if you're not able to make it all across the Atlantic to the uh, gorgeous British British Columbia, then keep your you keep your bike planted over here and make <laughs> it out to Ledges Alp. Yeah, some amazing trails for sure.
out here. So if you get a chance, get out there on your bike and make your plans to get out here at Les Des Alpes here. And uh, you definitely don't want to miss out because it's amazing, amazing trails, amazing terrain here in Les Des Alpes. And even, even if you're not a professional, if you've never even ridden a bike before, you can come out here, rent bikes, they have yeah. clinics, and you can Indeed. do everything you want and learn how to ride trails. All right, well, it's time to check in. Third member of our team, Dom Ranger, standing by with Brandon Stemmel. Let's send it down there. Dom, how you doing? So I'm down here with Brendan Semenuk. We're in between two runs. And Brendan, you've been on podiums consistently for quite many years now. Can you tell us a bit uh, what, what's, what does it take to be this consistent? How hard is it to be this consistent? Uh, like, it's extremely hard. Like, sometimes I just, it blows my mind, like, how, like, you know, like, on it people can be. So, like, contest to contest, always getting around. It's like, it's definitely not easy to drop in and stomp something and two runs so you know it's just like a lot of practice and yeah just hard work a lot of, a lot of time on your bike pretty much yeah <laughs> perfect thank you so much and uh, we'll see you on the second run and back to you guys well yeah i'll tell you what he is a very consistent rider he's been doing it year in and year out and it just shows his dedication to free riding all right well this is of course the first stop on the fmb diamond tour that's right the first stop out of six I'll tell you what, five to go here. And this is how it all breaks down for you. Check it out, your FMB Diamond. I was one of the riders who was really pushing for the new series because I'm, um, yeah, it's really good, easy to understand, good for us riders to have five events that we know, like, for those five events we have to be on top of the game. So it's easy to understand for people and it's easy for us, so um, I love it. We have ten riders that are qualified for the whole tour and then there's eight more riders that can come in for each diamond event and it will be always like new eight riders will be chosen depending on their position in the world ranking. I think it'll be a lot better, you know, the Diamond Series for people who just to watch and to, to watch the live streams and to be able to keep track of what's going on and, you know, who's at the top spot and everything changing. I think it'll be a lot more exciting. So it starts with Crankworks Ledo's Alp. We got Crankworks and Whistler, Red Bull Joyride. Um, then Bearclaw Invitational, third event. And then Red Bull District Ride in Nuremberg, which is back this year again. And then Red Bull Rampage as the big finale. Those are the five I'd pick. I'm glad that they included Rampage in it. It's definitely like an aspect of mountain biking. So it definitely should go towards the World Free Ride title. This year the FMB World Champ must be really wide open for everything. He must be good on streets, skate parks, dirt jumps, slopes, and uh, big mountains. So this year is gonna be sick. The Diamond Series this year is absolutely gonna determine the, the greatest all around mountain biker in the world. And latest out here in France. And of course, five stops, correction, five stops in your FMB Diamond Stops. And here's a look at how things are breaking down out here for your first Diamond Stop. You got Godzik in that number three spot, Poland Rider in third. Nikolai Rogatkin making a name for himself last year in that second spot. And then Sam Reynolds from Great Britain doing it in a big way in the top spot. And he's the guy you got to beat. An 80.25 is the score. And a guy who had a lot to do with uh, putting this course together every single year here in Lady Zump. Yannick Grineri, who's going to get his second run. And here comes Yannick, second and final run. So just a trooper, the Frenchman, out here for the local crowd. Front flip into the dish. Nice, solid truck driver out. Bar spin up the opposite way. And coming around to the step down. X up off. Making a smart decision. Backflip bar spin over oh. the open loop. That is one of the biggest tricks as well. I keep correcting myself every different rider to come down. Oh, and there is a flat tire on Granieri's bike. And he was having a run right there, unfortunately. Oh. oh, can I ever say that it's not somebody's day like Yannick's today? Just bad luck all the way around. 
He's such a great dude and, and just unfortunate because that looked like that was gonna be the start of a good run, Ryan. Wow, that was some really good riding. Very unique stuff as well. Yannick is uh, doing the front flip this year. He didn't have that in his trick bag last year. Looks to have everything really nice, solid and clean. The back flip bar spin in that open loop. Uh, it's just a real bummer that we have a mechanical issue like that. We don't see that too often in slope style. Yeah, and Yannick, unfortunately, not going to be his day. I'll not tell you what, the only luck he has been having all day long has been bad luck, and that's a tough break for such a great dude. So Pete Hankey is coming up next for you. Pete Hankey, the Red Bull rider, 19 on that first run. So Hanka uh, out of Germany. So we go in reverse order, we restack them from the lowest qualified to the top qualified after the first run. So that means uh, Reynolds is gonna get to go last. And here comes Pete Hanka right now, dropping in his second and final run, Ryan. So he gets the go. Man with the broken rib, Indian Air into the dish. 360 X up out, really smooth riding and a difference in trick variation to the other riders up into those dishes. Nice clean bar spin out. And let's see what he has into the open loop. Back flip, tuck no hander, and he lands it. Yes. He sticks it this time, coming into the road gap. Pete Hanka, suicide no hander on the hardtail bike. The seat is way below pinch level. Oh! oh and miss, no. miss the tuck on the handlebars on that back flip. And you know tuck what? no hander. You know, with that, with that rib injury, this could be trouble for him right now. You just got to hope that nothing serious from that one right there. Yeah, so unfortunately, as he was getting a little excited going into that back flip tuck no hander, he threw the hands off maybe a little too early before those hands were, the, before the bar was locked and loaded into his uh, stomach there. Oh, oh, and just missed the hand, actually, catching back. Lands way down and probably onto his right side as well, extending that arm up. Going to be very sore for oh, yeah. his rib. You called it right there, Ryan, just having trouble grabbing those bars to bring it back around. Uh, so unfortunate, it looks like a lot of the riders are just having difficulties making it into a full run down course here. And Hanka, there's a look at him right there. It's a, probably a combination of uh, frustration and being hurt right now too, as well. You got to give it up for him, trying his, trying his best. Well, yesterday was all about speed and style, and I'll tell you what, when it came down to it, is all about Cam Zeke. Let's take a look at some of the highlights, of speed and style yesterday. Take a look. Speed and style, super killer event, mixing dual slalom with tricks, kind of the, an event that we'd always dreamed about. It's really fun to re be racing people and it's really fun to have tricks count for something, you just mix the two worlds that we love so much, so excited to be here racing. so fast, but I'm just having fun, you know. I'll get better. I think it's awesome, the course is great, the turns are insane here, which is real good for me. And uh, these slopestyle guys, they're fast, you know, I think a lot of them started racing back in the day, so they're fast as well.
Watts is Watts is really fast, and he obviously has a ton of tricks. Speed style kind of is just who I am, I guess. I grew up racing, and I was actually a junior national slalom champ. Perfect way to combine what I was as a kid and who I am now. I really like it. And congratulations to Bernard Kerr in third. Greg Watts took second out there. And Cam Zink doing it on America's birthday, uh, doing it for the USA and taking that top spot. Congratulations going out to Cam Zink. Now we take our attention back up top here. Second run's underway here for Slopestyle. Signature event here at Crankworks laid us out. And this is the Kiwi out of New Zealand. Kelly McGarry looking to improve from a 22.5. And this is his second and final run down a 14 spot. This is Kelly McGarry. So Kelly dropping in. We saw that he was quite down on the uh, leaderboard, wasn't able to get the tricks off the last jump either. But he looks to be solid coming in here. We know that he's not the rider with some of the largest tricks, but definitely one of the nicest ones to out, have out here on the tour. Not quite getting the amplitude necessary for the uh, big judge scores off of that open loop, but it is a new feature and some of the riders are having troubles with it. Big backflip tuck no hander out of Kelly. Almost looks like he could touch the lip when he reaches out on those hands. Bar spin over the spine, coming up into the whale tail feature. He's making it into the dish, and a nice backflip out of the dish. Yeah. Tuck no hander over the gap jump. He wants that fronty. Oh, and he gets oh. it! Oh, that's a nice little highlight for Kelly McGarry. Really wanted that front flip. Wasn't able to put it down on the first run, but gets it right there on his second run. And you can see the big smiling Kiwi right there. Kelly McGarry on his second run. Take a look at these replays. Check out, this is a nice backflip linking it up into the first dish and a 360 out, really clean style out of him. He may not have some of those big combinations, but he does have backflip tuck no handers. Uh, Coming up into the dish as well, really solid step down backflip and had the tuck no hander over the next feature and the front flip on the last one. Oh man, that is exactly what he wanted to do. Let's see where that's going to put him with the rest of the mix, trying to get up there somewhere around the top spot just to crack the top five, got to be to 68.5. To get in the top 10, you got to be to 44.75. See what the judges think of the hair for the flare right there for Kelly McGarry. Sweet. And as he said, sweet. Yeah. Sweet eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly McGarry waiting for the score to come in from the judges. Where does he come up? Does he crack the top 10? Yes, he does. A 56 even in the ninth place for Kelly McGarry. <laughs> All right, let's go back up top here and lay this out in the Alps. Well, we see here Canadian boy. Wow, and you know, you're not used to seeing him down in 14th place. He had trouble on that first run. Let's see if he can clean things up and get the full pull in here on his second and final run. Dropping in for you next. This is Anthony Mazzari. Anthony, he has it here today. Backflip bar spin into the dish. 360 bar spin out. Opposite way for the bar up top. Coming into the first drop on course. Big backflip, oh. the only one doing that in the lineup. Linking up with an over the spine style bar spin off the open loop into the road gap. Downside whip and he oh. cleans it. Big flip whip. Links that up super nice. It looks like he had a nice perfect nose in. 360 downside oh. whip. Cleans it on the landing as well. Bar spin into the dish. Solid back oh. the out, he has this. Pedaling in, and he gets it coming off the last feature. Front flip, tuck no oh. hand oh. oh. Anthony Mazzari on his second and final run. Pressure on him, and he comes out and delivers like the postman.
Anthony Mazzari, nicely done, sir. That is one of the smoothest runs we've seen today, and having the redemption, he had so much pressure on top of his shoulders coming off that first run. He hasn't been having a great contest season, but he did a great run here for the second run. I call him sir, but he's only 18 years old. But it, for an 18 year old, this guy's got big tricks. Take a look. Check out that backflip off such a small such a small drop on the top of the course. Unique as well as he went for the spine, the spine on the open loop, bar spin. Downside whip. And here's the backflip tail up, really unique as well. So much amplitude out of the young Canadian rider. 360 downside whip over the spine. And here we go into the big one. Front flip, tuck no hander. All right, look at this. And then he puts it down, last run. And you can tell he is amazing. He's hopping all over the place. What's the score going to be? He's got to be at 80.25 to get in that top spot. The score coming in for Anthony Mazzari. Can he do it? Did he do it? A 90.50, oh, say hello to your new leader, Anthony Mazzari, doing it on a second and final run. Wow, unbelievable. That is something that I just can't believe. Pressure against him, but he comes out and he delivers. Anthony Mazzari, let's send it down to Dom, stand by. Anthony, we have the score. 90.5, you are at the top spot right now, and this one's gonna be a hard one to beat. We, know you, we knew you had the potential for this kind of run. You did it, you nailed it. Well, how do you feel? I feel awesome, you know, especially after messing up on something, you know, oh so simple on the first run. So, you know, just to make it to the bottom and get exactly what I wanted, I'm so excited. Well, we're really excited for you, and it's so nice to see young guns like you pushing it, getting to the top, good work. Back to you guys. Oh, man. There you go, Anthony Missouri. Well, you knew he had it in him. He had a little trouble on some of the easiest stuff. But now look at things. Nikolai Rogatkin bumped down to third. Sam Reynolds bumped down to two. Make way for the Canadian, Anthony Mazzari, 18 years old at 90.5, Ryan, wow. Man, can you look at that leaderboard as well? <laughs> we almost have a different country for each position in the top 10. <laughs> really great to see Anthony on top, though. Almost 10 point difference between him and Sam Reynolds in second place. So let's see if somebody can put a run together. I think this guy has a lot of combinations that can do well in his next run. Well, here we go from the Czech Republic. Tomas Zajdek now coming up for you. Let's see what he's got. Second and final run for T. So, Thomas Zajda, tail with the bar spin. 360 look back. Opposite way for the bar spin up top. That's what a lot of riders seem to be doing here. Double bar spin on with the step down. And into the court flip. Oh, putting a foot down, unfortunately. Coming into the road gap feature. Oh, and not quite getting the trick he was looking for out of that. Bar spin to tail up, opposite of what he did the first jump. Solid 360 whip over the spine. Coming up into the dish, bar spin in. Not getting the trick he was looking for out of the dish, however. Jumping into the hip, jumping. What does he have off the last jump? Huge no foot can Superman tail whip. So Tomas Ida right there trying to get it down. Had a little trouble up top, but still putting down a solid, clean lower section of this course here in late is out. But right now, still, this place is buzzing with the score. Anthony Missouri, the 90.5. But let's look at Thomas Zaida right here going to work in his office. Yeah, and getting that 360 look back out of there. And the double bar has been a unique feature to get that uh, that big of a combination trick. But that's where it kind of messed up for him. That open loop backflip. He just dabbed a foot down, maybe landed some soft stuff. Didn't get the trick off this Red Bull whale tail that he was looking for, but did get this nice extended Superman tail whip. Well, we will see as we wait for the score to come in for him to crack the top three. 75-5, Rogatkin in that third spot. The youngsters, large and in charge, Rogatkin third. Mazzari in that number one spot. And Reynolds only 23, and he's in that second spot. So 
Where does Zyda fit in with this on the second and final run? What a great day here in Lay the Alps for Crankworks. Our slope style event. Had a bunch of rain yesterday, but cleared up to some blue skies today, bluebird conditions out here. Things drying up. Don't forget pump track coming up for you later on today. Brad Jay, Ryan Meyer up in the SRAM booth. Just waiting for the judge's score on this one. And you know he wants to know what that score is going to be as well. So score coming in. 56-7-5, a very big improvement from his first run, and that'll put him in the top 10, a very respectable finish if he could remain in that top 10, Ryan. But a new rider coming up here, Mr. Cam McColl. Aptos, California, only a 38.25 on his first run. We know he is able to conquer and get a solid run down here. Unfortunately, just made it uh, crash out on the last jump, but he can do this. Well, here he goes. Time to prove it right now. Cam McCall coming in hot. So Cam McCall, no stranger to slope style. As Zinc was mentioning earlier, they were some of the innovators and the guys who were forming this sport that we know today. Solid 360 off of the first step down. Big old backflip. Oh, and goes down. Uh, had the Hyatt got up there. Well, let's bring him on home. Cam McCall. Legendary free rider Cam McCall making his way down a second and final run. Suicide no-hander off the road gap. Just a straight backflip coming off of the jump. He knows that it's kind of eliminated, but he's still doing a nice solid 360 over the spine. Aaron, air out. Coming around to the last hip jump on course. Solid sailed out, tuck no hander. And a big flip whip, ending it off for Cam McCall. Nice and simple into the finish line. And nice, nicely done with that flip whip at the end. But I, I have a hard time calling a flip whip simple, Ryan Meyer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, well, I guess times have changed, yeah. my man. My, my old yeah. man, I might yeah. say. The old man is fine right there. I will take that all day long. My colonel. <laughs> colonel Sanders up in the booth, Ryan Meyer, alongside. And uh, take a look at the replays here of the ambassador to free riding. So it looked like it was going all good here. 360 off of the step down, and there, big amplitude on that backflip, making it a full loop out of that open loop, and just uh, maybe landing in some soft stuff and went down and unfortunately that's what threw up the whole momentum in Cam's run. Regular backflip over that jump. And check out that flip whip though, really textbook out of the Aptos boy, Cam McCall. All right, well, what is that score gonna be for Cam McCall? Checking in with a 35, so the 38.25 is what he's gonna end with in 14th is where he is at. That's also the spot where he is at in the FMB World Tour rankings as well Good in that 14th spot. So, well, this is how it's breaking down. Still second runs on the way for you, but you got Brandon Selmanok in the fifth spot. Simon Gutsing fourth, and there's your three, two, and one. We'll be right back, finishing up the second runs here from Ladies Out. And a beautiful, gorgeous day out here. Latest out France here, Crankworks. Unbelievable conditions out here for these riders. We had the rain, Ryan Meyer. We had it yesterday, cleared up. Sunny skies today, things are going good. Isn't it so great how we can always bring out slopes on the sun and the skies just break yeah. for us? Well, currently in 13th place, a so 44.75 is what he had injured out here last year redemption is what it's all about but i'll tell you what he's got an amazing bag of tricks and he's going to put them on display right now here comes brett reader so reader starting off with the big front flip into the dish 360 truck out bar spin up top and coming into the step down with a nice downside tail whip into the open loop getting that around Made nice style out of that. It almost looked like he was off axis, but still landed perfect. Opposite whip on the step down. Flip whip. Oh. Opposite whip, laying into flip whip. Into a truck driver over the spine. Bar in. Back, no! Oh, no! Oh, he 
he's up, he's okay. That's one of the hardest oh, features man. that you, uh, oh. Wow, I can't believe he went for the backflip bar spin off of the step down. That's something new as well that we don't see very often. But uncharacteristic, the Canadian Brett Reader might have a, a bit of demons playing in his head for this uh, Crankworks Ladies Out course. Well, you know what, he it said it earlier when Dom had a chance to talk to him, that you know what, it's one of those things, it's a mind game, and plus playing with him a little bit. But the sad part about that run, that run was coming together so nicely for him. Not sure what happened on the rotation there. Had to pre press the eject button, but so glad he came out, was able to get up and ride down. Take a look at these replays. You'll see in the replay, he popped the bar spin a little too early. And, oh, just couldn't get the catch on that. Really, really thankful that he was able to get out of that unscathed. So, oh, just, is, yeah. not, just couldn't quite get the, get the grab on the, on the bar spin and get the full rotation around. It just shows you how close it can be. So the 28.25, Reader's going to end with a 44.75, but he will live to ride another day. And that could have gone much worse for Brett Reader. Glad he is okay. Back up top. American Cam Zink doing it for Independence Day yesterday. Yeah, taking that big win out there in speed and style. And uh, today, now he's just trying to climb out of that 12th spot, 53-5 on his first run score. Second and final run for Cam Zink. Zink starting it off with big backflip, one foot X up. 360 out of the dish. Bar, oh, toboggan up top. Going for the seat grab. One foot X up off the step down feature. And what does he have? Pops it, nice and clean, getting that around for the open loop. And into the road gap. Oh. Really nice backflip. Backflip Superman C grab. Keep it going, Cam. Oh, and links up into one foot X up. Such a big trick to do, especially mid run. One foot X up into the dish. 360 out of the dish. Blowing a pedal off, unfortunately. That's going to oh. do it for the second run of Cam Zink. And one of those things where he was doing the same thing, Reader. He's putting together a solid run. That could have put him up in the mix somewhere, maybe possibly in that top 10 spot. Maybe even close to that top five spot if he could have continued with that run. But not to be for Cam Zink today. But I'll tell you what, not a bad ladies out crankworks for him with that win yesterday in speed style. Yeah, unfortunately, it looked so good here. Back from Superman Seagrab, such good extension. Couldn't quite see the landing. Maybe he slipped the pedal on that. And into the 360 off of the step down feature. And maybe that just blew off the pedals there. Couldn't hold on. Really unfortunate. Such big tricks. Yeah, 30.50. He'll remain in 12. The 53.5 is going to be the score that Cam Zink will end with. But hey, you're coming out taking a win speed and style yesterday. Not too bad. It wasn't to me to get him on the podium out here today. But let's go back up top. Our, our next rider to go. Logan Pete. A guy that wasn't even going to be, wasn't even invited out here, but he got that podium in the last okay. event. And by getting that podium, he earned himself a spot right. out here at Crankworks. And he's got a 57.5. So Logan Pete in the top 10, not too shabby for a guy who wasn't even supposed to be here. Man, and the first rider to drop on course today had such a perfect run until the very last jump. So let's see. And oh! Logan Pete. Looks like he's getting up, so. Oh, unfortunately. What happened? Looks like he uh, maybe carved a tiny bit on that 360 and went totally off of the side of that feature. Really unorthodox unortho way to land as well, so. Nice to see that he's up and okay, but I'm sure his ego is bummed a little more than uh, his body right now. Well, let's see if we can see what happened. I'm not sure, actually, went wrong. That was a surprise to all of us here. The first jump here, going for the 360. And you see, he pulls the eject as he sees he's way too far over to the right of that. You see the reaction from the fans out here. Who had the... See how... See how... Got a thumbs up from one of the fans. Thanks for your help out there. Man. All right, well, coming up for you. <laughs> Seven more riders to go. 
We'll be right back right after this. There is a look at uh, Logan Pete, a frustrated Logan Pete right there. But I'll tell you what, you know what, in the top 10 in a, in a competition like this, this is still huge for him. Here we are, Lay de Zalp, second and final runs going on for you right now. Seven more riders to go that stand in the way of Anthony Mazzari taking his first ever Crankworks win. He was podiumed back in 2011, but here we go right now. The claw, drop it in. So Darren getting it going as well. He was one of the riders to be able to get the first run linked up nice. 360 tabletop out of the gate here. Let's see what he has on the drop feature. Indian Air. And coming for the open loop, getting that nice and clean on yeah, the landing. That looked Road good. gap feature. Let's see what Darren has. One foot tabletop on that hip jump. And Superman extending it a little better than he did the last run. Into the spine feature. 360 over the spine and coming up into the Red Bull whale tail. Making a little bit of a tag actually, not getting the trick that he was looking for. Sunshine and however, he's looking down to see if he has a flat tire or something as he's not quite getting the speed he wanted to finish off this run. Yeah, you, you see him kind of looking down at his bike right there too as well as he crossed the, into the uh, finish corral. So some problems there, but uh, Darren Bearclaw in the eight spot, 61.5. And big props out to uh, Bear Cloud giving us that GoPro course preview earlier today. Legendary The Claw. Take a look at the uh, replays here of The Claw. Well, nice extended Superman seat grab out of Darren. The 360 over top of the spine. Everything is very fluid that he does as well. Unfortunately, looks when he went to the dish here, he didn't quite get the speed necessary, and that's where it, uh, a couple of tags end up for no more tricks on the rest of the run. So Claw with a 43.75, the 61.5. That's the score that he is going to end with today. Let's see if that'll keep him in a respectable eighth place finish for Darren Bearclaw, the Claw out here. Antoine Bazette coming up for you next. Antoine in the seventh spot, just one spot above the Claw. Then you got Tomas Janon, he's coming up, he's in sixth. Brandon Seminock on the way in fifth. And Godzik in that fourth spot. But right now, Mazzari's 90.5 is the score to beat. Reynolds, 80.25. There you go. Take a look at it right now. There's Nick Nikolai Rogak, and we talked a lot about him in the beginning. Well, he made a name for himself last year. He's making a name for himself this year. He's in third place right now. Sam Reynolds, he's been solid all year. Uh, three top five finishes, so Sam Reynolds up there in the mix as well. And then you got Anthony Mazzari looking for his first ever Crankwork Slope style win with some more riders to go, standing between him and that win. Okay. Five more riders to be exact. Antoine Bazet. see, the thing is, all of these riders coming up could dethrone him out of that spot. And Antoine Bazet, here's his effort at trying to do just that. 65-75 on his first run. So unfortunately, we saw him do a nice double flip at the end of the run, but he had a foot dab, and that cost him on the judging. So there was an opposite whip into a regular whip out of the drop here. Bar spin. And what does he have on the open loop? Airing it nice and smooth, so he didn't get the foot dab on this one. Looks like it's getting into a better run. Backflip tabletop. Nice bit of style. Front flip tuck no hander oh. over the middle jump. Coming into the spine. Flat spin, wow. kind of a cork flip. And let's see. Backflip into this. And a backflip. Oh. Coming into the hip jump. Tuck no hander, a little bit of a case. On oh, a flat spin, three table. He did not have the speed to do the double flip anymore, but got a nice solid run out for number two. Well, now this is the situation, Ryan Mark. Hugh, the statement, would not like to be a judge at this point. Where does he go? You know that's not gonna challenge Anthony Missouri's top spot 
but any position you finish, the higher you finish, the better for you with the remaining stops to go. Yeah, and you can see Bizet is really not too happy with that one. He knew that he had some of the tricks and just unfortunately couldn't get it all linked up so nice. There's a front flip tuck no hander and their feet blew yeah. off already. I think that's where it kind of went a little wrong. The flip in and didn't get the back flip tuck no hander out that he was looking for. And I know he was going for a double flip variation on that last jump. So pretty uh, disappointed uh, Frenchman down there, I think. All right, let's send it down to Dom Granger standing by with Antoine Bazet. Antoine, we saw you shaking your head, sitting down there. This was not the run you were looking for, was it? No, no, no. I could have done way better. Still good. I didn't crash. Uh, first run, I don't know how I put put my feet twice on the on the run. And this one was going pretty good before what went wrong. Frondi, Frondi no under, I think I missed a pedal and then uh, case. I wanted to double flip, but whatever. <laughs> ben, on est très content d'avoir pu te, te voir rider aujourd'hui euh, et de, que tu ne sois pas tombé non plus. <laughs> merci, merci. Il fallait parler en anglais ou en français en fait uh, En anglais, ça va. Okay. <laughs> merci. So, I was just telling him that we were really happy to see him ride here in his homeland, France, and uh, that he didn't make it all the way to the bottom. Oh, a thank nice, you nice so much. little French yeah. flair in there oh, from our, our gorgeous cool. commentator. That is awesome. That is awesome. Dom right there catching up with Antoine Mazette. All right, well, the guy that everyone is gunning for, the guy that everyone is chasing is your current leader with a 90.5. It's Anthony Mazzari. Let's take a look at some of the highlights of that 90.5, the only score in the 90s. Here we go. All right, well, let's take a look. I think we got the highlights. We could take a look at uh, Anthony Mazzari here. A 90.5 coming out swinging here and just dropping the 90 points up. I mean, and look at the, the next score is Reynolds with 10 points below him. Take a look here at uh, Mazzari right here. These are the highlights from that run, a 90.5. And look at these awesome tricks coming out of the Canadian truck driver up in the bar spin here. And look at the big backflip coming off that Bam. first jump. And such a small drop to do that. There we go, some unique riding as well. The bar spin on that open loop. Solid downside tail up as he comes off of that step down feature. Huge amplitude on the flip whip. And this is what's boosting him up into that 90 point score. 360 downside whip, another difficult maneuver for the young Canadian. Bar spin into the dish, flip out. He didn't get the case on that second run. That's what messed him up on the first one and gets over that hip jump. Coming into this last front flip, tuck no hander. And there's another angle of it right there, looking at that and just a solid run. You know what? I, I was that's that's what everyone's chasing right there. But I talked to a lot of the riders, and they were saying that if he gets to that last hit and he's doing good, he watch out for him. There you go. Go Zeke number four, Regatkin number three, Reynolds number two, and the man everyone's chasing, Anthony Missouri, looking for his first Crankwork Slope style win with a 90.5. Tomas Janone, he already knows what it's like to win because he did just that. Whistler 2012. He took the big win out there over Martin Soderstrom. Here we go, Tomar Janon, second about a run. Oh, if somebody can bump into the 90s, it's Janon. Look at the boost in that bar spin, three whip and catches it perfect. Toboggan up top on the step up. He has a lot of tricks that can make some innovative runs down here. Downside whip over the step down. Huge, perfect flip on that open loop. Looping it around into the step down. Road gap with a top side whip. <laughs> and a double oh. whip. So clean and flowing all the rotations around. He has a lot of amplitude and catching all the pedals. Perfect. 360 downside whip. Looked like he was doing it in his sleep. Whip into the drop. 360 out. Oh, he's doing it. Pedal around for the hip jump. Nice cat. One more to go. Nice. The Belgian rider pulling wow. it together for run two. And if you're Anthony Missouri right now, you're like, no. I hope he just didn't knock me out of that top spot. Anthony Missouri in search of his first Crankwork Slope style win. 
He did it. He got third in 2011. Tomar Genot took his first win in 2012, but check these three plays. So that three whip out as well, really big amplitude. Is it gonna be enough to bump the Canadian out of number one, however? Tail whips, a couple variations here, but a lot of whips. Uh, double tail up there, really nice and clean. And the front flip though, linking it up for the last jump. Uh, you could see the reaction of Tomar Genon right there. He really needed a run. He had trouble on that uh, first run, and he knew that he, and you knew as well as I know that he can put a run to beat any of these guys out here as well. He's done it before. Yeah, he definitely has, and he is one of the men on fire in the contest scene before we started this Diamond Series here today. A lot of talk about this guy. I mean, when he took that win in 2012, he picked up that big Red Bull sponsor that put him in the spotlight. So now the score, is it enough to beat a 90.5? The score to beat, Anthony Mazzari's 90.5. To beat second, he's got to beat an 80.25, or to beat third at 75.5, has he done it? An 80, 86.5, he's going to go into second place with that score. Tomas, you know, into second place. Anthony Missouri, the top spot, he just dodged a bullet. But heck, if he can hold on to this, he can be back on the podium at Crankers for Tomas, you know. Ooh, that's the look of determination up top. Brandon Semenuk will be coming up for you next. Don't go anywhere, I'll tell you what. This is a barn burner out here. Let's take a look at our leaderboard so far. There it is, in, from Great Britain, Sam Reynolds, 80.25. Tomar Junot in second from Belgium with an 86.5. And your leader from Canada, Anthony Missouri, 90.5. We'll be right back with our final second runs here in Ladies Out. And welcome back to Crankworks. Late is out right here. We got four more riders to go, and then we'll clear the dust, and we'll see who's going to be the champ. Is it going to be Anthony Mazzari, Tomas Janan in second, or will it be Reynolds in third? Or will it be this man right here, defending champ from Lady Zomp last year, did it in a big way, also went out there in Whistler, also took the big win out there as well. A very, very consistent rider, and a guy at any point could drop a score in the 90s. There he is. Ready to go. You gotta wonder what is going through his head right now. He knows what he has to beat, a 90.5. You can a see of, him. A lot of pressure on him right a now. A lot of pressure on his shoulders, that's for sure. Here we go. Second and final run. Defending champ from last year. This is Brandon Semenuk. So Semenuk rolling around. Nice and fast into that backflip bar spin. 360 bar spin out. And then going the opposite way with those bars. Up top the step up. Oh, and gets a whip, but slipping a pedal a little bit. One foot can backflip. Coming into the road gap. Huge oh. flip over the road gap, nice and clean. Cork 720. Oh. Stomps it into the spine. 360 downside, oh. but that's where he messed up last run. Perfectly linked up. Tug no hander, 360 out. Pedaling around to get the hip jump, and he makes it over. Last feature. Big floaty win. Oh, he goes down. Oh, just unfortunate for the Canadian rider. Couldn't link it up onto the last jump. I don't know, he was going for a wow. double whip opposite on the last run, and I'm just gonna watch and uh, play the replay out here and see what happened. You see Logan Pete going over to him, just telling him, hey, it's okay, man. Both, the day he both, was looking those, for both those two friends having a really difficult time linking up their runs here on the Letters Out Force. Take a look at these replays. But check this, backflip bar spin in, such solid riding on this top section. And here he slipped a pedal actually on that whip. Didn't quite get the, the cranks around. 
One foot can flip. Nice flip on the road gap. Check the cork seven here. Just textbook run. And here, the 360 downside whip, stomping the pedals. Tuck no hander up into the dish. And coming out with the 360. Almost a little bit of an over rotation. You see him holding back and couldn't quite get the rotation on that tail whip at the end. Shaking the hands up. All right, so well, unfortunately for Brandon Semenuk, that's not going to be enough to get him up in there. We'll wait for the score officially to come in for him. So the 64 2 5 for Brandon Semenuk, and that is an unfortunate day for him. Not going to be a returning champion. One thing for sure, we are going to have a new Crankworks champion here in Leda Zalp. Crankworks. Now, I'll tell you what, what an amazing day so far it has been here in Les Des Alpes. Anthony Mazzari, the man of the hour. Avalanche. <laughs> 90.5 is the yeah. score. Make some noise, Montpellier. So Simon Gozzi locked and loaded down in that fifth spot from Poland. The score to beat. He's trying to beat Reynolds, 80.25. Here he comes. Whoops up in the three outs, so keeping it going through it. Gets the bar spin in there. And you can see him. Oh, on the loop, and he goes down. Simon Gozzi goes down and loops out on it. Ryan, I, I'm not sure what went wrong there. Well, unfortunate for the Polish rider. Man. Too bad, but it's, everyone's having difficulties on these second runs. Well, he's just gonna come on down and do what he can, but right now. Huge Superman extended to the moon. Solid 360 over the spine. Oh, and overshooting a little bit into the dish. Making the loop around at the hip. What does he have about the big last jump? Just whipping it out for the crowd. So one thing for sure is Anthony Mazzari is going to come away with a podium position. But you still got a couple more riders left to see if they can shake things up. I'll tell you what, Nikolai Rogatkin can do just that. He'll be coming up as well. And we'll just see what happened here with Gozik. He goes with the side saddle lander off that feature and into the over loop. He was looking for side saddle and link it up, but that's a really hard jump to take off of. Well, I, I, Superman extended, though. I like his idea there, you know, mixing it up for the judges, seeing something different. No other rider trying that. Yeah, he's definitely doing the innovative line work here. Simon Gozik, though, always having a lot of fun out of these contests. And uh, he'll remain in fifth place, but Gozik with fifth place. I mean, the top five finish with the best in the world. That's pretty good stuff out of him right there if he can hold on to that spot. And here we go, Nikolai Rogatkin, second and final run. He was in a podium position for a very long time until Tomar Genome bumped him down to the four, so he's on the outside looking in. If he could put down a run here, he knows, he's, he, knows he can challenge Anthony Mazzari for that top spot. Yeah, Rogatkin, man, he's a guy who has a lot of these big tricks. As we've seen before in the replays, triple whips he has, cash rolls he has, and we know he has a lot of big flip variations, but we didn't see that in run number one. Well, here we go, 75-5 on the first run. Bump down in the fourth. That doesn't even get you on the podium. There's a look at Anthony Mazzari, your current leader. A 90.5 is the score to beat. You know Mazzari is nervous with Rogatkin Staring him down, and here we go. One last little adjustment right there for the youngster. Drop it in next, second and final run for Nikolai Rogatkin. So Rogatkin, what do you have? Huge Superman C grab into the dish. Massive no foot can out. Those are two unique tricks. Judges are gonna be noting that. Bar spin up. Nice tail whip off the step down. Oh, and putting a foot down, unfortunately, off of the open loop. What does he have into the road gap feature? Oh, no trick off the road gap. He knows this is it. 
This is it, Nikolai Rogatkin. Oh, too bad he's not able to put it together for run number two. That is not the run he was looking for, so Anthony Mazzari is gonna feel very comfortable about that. Yeah, unfortunate, really unfortunate for Gagin, but I think Anthony is in a very comfortable spot right now. So what is the score gonna be with the problems there? You know that that's not gonna challenge that top spot. A 90.5. What is going on here? Anthony Mazzari getting a little something to eat. Let's take a look at our leaderboard here. And here's our leaderboard as it stands. Sam Reynolds in third at 80.25. Tomar Gino in second with an 86.5. And Anthony Mazzari a 90.5. And that is how it's going to play out. We're getting word that Sam Reynolds doesn't look like he's gonna be taking that second and final run today. He, he actually mentioned that it was such a great run for him. He's always been plagued with a bad one here in Landers Alps, so he was just gonna stick with that 80. And there you go, Anthony Missouri in number one. Anthony, you have done it. You are the first, the winner of the slope style, the signature event of Crankworks, later is out. You had third place in 2011, surprised everybody, and now you're here, the youngster beating all the big names. How you feel? I can't even explain it, you know, I don't know how I feel. It just feels great, amazing. And uh, Ania, what, what was your, your secret out there? Um, you know, I just rode the course as much as I could with this lift here. You can take laps and laps and laps. So I think I rode the course as more than anybody else here. So just uh, getting used to everything, I think. Well, congratulations once again. I'm sure you're stoked out of your mind. Insane. And uh, we're very, very happy for you. And we'll go back to you guys. Well, there you go. Congratulations are in order for his first ever Crankworks win. Anthony Missouri doing it for Morpheus, the Red Bull rider at 90.5. Tomas Janone grabbing that second spot. And Sam Reynolds doing it for Polygon at 80.25 from Great Britain in third. But I'll tell you what, Ryan, we got to take a look at some of these highlights, man. What an amazing day it has been out here at Ladies Out. Here's all the boys going to work. Just some ups and downs, especially. We couldn't believe it. Some really shocking runs and some really shocking, incredible riders like Logan Pete there who were not able to link up everything and make a solid, solid statement. But we did have really nice uh, intentions and, and great work from all the riders that came out and performed. Huge double backflip out of the Frenchman right there. Unfortunately, a couple foot dabs and things like this linked those guys and not able to stick into the top spot with the judges here. Well, what a story. I mean, for Anthony Mazzari, third place, 2011 at Whistler. And he was 15 years old. He made a name for himself, picked up that big sponsor with Red Bull. The world was a buzz about Anthony Mazzari, but it wasn't until today that he proved that he could win the big game when it counted, and he did just that. Anthony Mazzari, a 90.5, and you look at the difference. I mean, four points difference between Tomar Janone and then almost 10 points difference or 10 points difference between Reynolds right there from third to one. Yeah, but was, and with only one run, and a, a, the pressure was on him second final run. Definitely, and and uh, Reynolds being able to link up and stay on the box, but I'm so ecstatic to see Anthony on top. This is the thing that he was looking for since that it, since he was 15, chasing all the slope style contests out here. He's been such a pleasure to have, and so nice to see him win this big one here. <laughs> you do it. You do well, it. pump track, a challenge presented by RockShock. That's coming up for you. I'm going to look for an 8.15 start. We'll get that party going. But Anthony Mazzari, you know, and I thought after he, he, he got third in 2011, when he got third in 2011, I was thinking that, you know, he's going to win soon, but it took him till now to make it happen. Tomorrow coming up, yeah, that's the Air DH. Please join us for that tomorrow. Those are your times coming up the Air DH. First time we put that on the webcast and uh, making that happen tomorrow. Please join us for that. It's going to be absolutely awesome. I look forward to that. So, so good stuff out of there. But Anthony Mazzari, I mean, he is speechless. Here's a guy that talks so much, but yet 
He was speechless. Speechless. Wow. Yeah, speechless. I don't think he knows. Uh, it, it definitely hasn't sunk in yet, but yeah. I think it might sink, sink in a little later for the kid. All right. Well, we got the awards. The official awards coming up for you when we return right here. Latest out. Crank work slopes now in the books. It's in the history books right there. The Slope Stock Competition signature event out here at Crankworks in the books. And uh, we're going to head on down. We got the awards coming up for you in, in just a moment. But I'll tell you what, man, Ryan, Anthony Missouri, 90.5. How sweet is that for Missouri? Oh, just such a pleasure to see the guy on top of the board. His mom and girlfriend just sitting a meter away from us, just cringing the whole time, so <laughs> nervous, biting their fingernails, just waiting and hoping, crossing their fingers that Anthony was going to stay on top. Really, really pleasure to see him up there, though. Well, take a look at that. Sam Reynolds says, I don't need two runs. I'm just going to go ahead and bank on that first run, and he did just that. That first run put Reynolds in 80.25. And Tomar Ginone in 86.5 in that second spot, and Anthony Missouri 90.5 top spot. I think it's going to make some of these riders pretty hungry for the next Diamond Series events coming up. A few of these guys who uh, really are the competitive type and do not like being too low on the podium. All right, well, it is time to crown our top three. In third place, doing it for Polygon, had a great print with an 80.25. Let's hear it for Sam Reynolds. Yes, Sam Reynolds, ladies and gentlemen. He came back. Yeah, all right, Sam. Perfect. That was cool. So please, a big round of applause. And Reynolds, right before we uh, got the contest going here, he said, you know, I'm going to be sulking in my bed, crying at night, or spraying the champagne bottles all over you guys. And I think it's the later because he's a happy man today standing on top of that podium. 3,000 euros going to Sam Reynolds in that third spot for Great Bridge. And in second place, 86.5 from Belgium for Kenya Bikes. Tomar Janon taking 5,000 euros right there. Janon in second. So the European boys rounding off the one to two and three. And your winner, Duna for Morpheus with a 90.5 from Canada. Duna for Red Bull. It's Anthony Mazzeri. There you go, three, two, and one. Sam Reynolds from Great Britain, third place. Tomar Janon in second, and Anthony Mazzari with his first ever Crankworks win in slope style. How sweet it is right there for Anthony Mazzari, just 18 years old. Wow, final thoughts, Ryan Meyer. Uh, just can't say it enough, I'm so happy for the kid. He doesn't even know how to open the champagne bottle. He's so new to this thing. <laughs> Well, if it was grape juice, I'm sure he could probably open that up or a can of Red Bull. But he is going to spray. Hey, wait a minute. He can't do that. Oh, I think he can. We're in France. Oh, legal drinking. Yeah, it is all good. So, Anthony Mazzari. Anthony Mazzari, I don't know what to say. I mean, when he, but when he was 15 and he got third place in 2011, I thought within a year or two, he's going to be winning Crankwork, Crankworks. And then he did win for those, those years. And then to finally get it, man, that's got to feel pretty totally. good. I think it puts such a big pressure on the guy's shoulders when he, uh, you know, he blew up and he came with all this amplitude into the, into the contest scene. And everyone was like, wow, who is this guy? Who's this boost that we need for the sport? And I think it puts so much pressure on his shoulders that he couldn't actually deliver. He wanted to compete at such a high level and ended up blowing up in a lot of contests. And I think, I, I mean, I might not put me on the record here, but I think this is actually the first contest he's ever won in mountain biking. You know what? I think you just might be right on that one right there. Well, we got Pump Track. We ain't done yet. Pump Track Challenge presented by Rockshot coming up. starts right now. Here's a look at uh, last year and uh, a little bit of a, a higher start this year. But this is going to be our next webcast coming up for you under the lights. You can see how it broke down last year. 
And uh, Adrian Laurent trying to defend his title. Not just Adrian Laurent defending his title from Lady Zell. He won in Whistler and he won in Lady Zell. Yeah. I mean, Mitch Rapolato owned it for a while, and then it's all about Adrian Laurent. He, came, he came out as a pump track king, and as well, we saw him yesterday competing at a very high level in the speed and style. So Adrian Laurent doing it again for France, and hopefully we'll see him out here tonight just putting on such a good show. Well, of course, that is coming up later tonight. But uh, once again, I want to give it up for Nikolai Rogatkin, too, as well. He, he burst onto the scene last year and just barely missing the podium out here in fourth place. What do you say about that guy right there? Well, we know he has a lot of big tricks. And unfortunately, just like a lot of the riders, Brandon Semini, Brett Reeder, Logan Pete, they couldn't pull it together. But this is the time that the Anthony Missouri, the Sam Reynolds, they all get to go in the, in the top spot and show that they have what it takes to stay up there. And it also shows you how tough it is to win at Crankworks. When Anthony Mazzari got up there in that third place spot, wow. And now he is, he is a winner, of officially a Crankworks winner. And there's your FMB rankings right there. Anthony Mazzari, the number one spot. Tomar Janot, number two. Sam Reynolds, three. Nikolai Rogakin, four. Well, we'll be back with you tonight. Your Pump Track Challenge presented by RockShock.